Welcome to the Land of House channel. I'm Seth. Today I'm working with the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. This is a 40 watt laser engraving machine, but it also has a quick button to reduce that 40 watts down to 22 watts for higher detail. So in today's video, what I want to do is show that comparison between the 40 watt and the 22 watt. I've got uh, two different types of wood, and I've also got two different types of metal that I want to engrave on. After we do that, I also want to calibrate the camera in the Lightburn software, and then show how you can use the camera to see your work surface. And that way, no matter where you move around your material, you can find it and engrave it perfectly each time. And then to wrap up this video, I want to do a comparison between the Creality Falcon 2 Pro and the Jimitsu L8 laser, which is a In order to watt change laser. from 40 so watt to 22 watt. Let's go ahead and jump into this video. In order to turn on the laser, there is a switch right over here. I'm going to press that to turn this on. It'll blink, it'll have the air assist, we'll turn on. In order to change from 40 watt to 22 watt, there is a little black button right up here. If it says normal and precise, then I know that that is the 40 watt. If I hold that down, about three seconds. When it just says precise, it has dropped this down to the 22 watt module. So we will do a comparison between 22 watt and 40 watt right now. For this test, I'm gonna play some of this cheap basswood and also this metal card and we will do a comparison between the two so we'll go ahead and line the laser up here all right we'll do right there for the wood test first i've brought in a picture of a cute cat and i'm going to use this to test out the 40 watt and the 20 watt features of this laser so let's make this a fairly small size and then i'm going to have that on both the card and the wood and put the picture up here in the top and then I think I'll just take a text and say 40 watt. All right, let's do a frame real quick and see if this is going to fit inside of our material. I'm going to turn the light on so we can see what's going on in here. Go ahead and close the lid. And this is going to be the 40 watt test. just finished up here. I'm going to move this out of the way so we can see what it looks like. <laughs> Very nice. All right, let me move this down here and we will try out the 22 watt setting. I think that ought to do it. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the 40 watt by holding down this for three seconds. We should be good to go now. I'm now using the exact same settings in light burn. Let's see what we get here. Now I forgot to change the text here from 40 watt to 22 watt. So yeah, huge difference. I think that shows up on camera. Now that we've seen those results, let's move on to this card over here. I'm gonna take out the words where it says 40 watt and just do the other here. I need to refocus the laser here on top of this. so. I'm going to loosen up these thumb screws, let that fall down, and then tighten it back up, pull that out. And I should be ready now to engrave on this business card. So once again, I'm gonna turn on the 40 watt. All right, I'm seeing the cat there on the 40 watt. Okay, so the top one up here is the 40 watt and the bottom one is the 22 watt. So to be honest, I'm not really seeing much of a difference between the two here on the metal card. So I guess the wood is where it's really going to show up with a big difference. To calibrate the camera, I'm using this card, which I will place here in the bed. And then I'm gonna to go to Lightburn. I'm gonna use the software to try to find the middle here. I press capture and see if I can get uh, closest to one. So here's a score of 0.05. Seems like it's pretty good. I'm going to click next. Then I want to move this straight down to the bottom of the honeycomb. And once again, I'm going to press the capture button. And I'm going to keep doing this until I have the system ready. 
The difference between the 40 watt and the 22 watt settings here on the module were pretty impressive for engraving into wood. Not as much on the metal card here, but I think it is definitely worth swapping over to the 22 watt if you're going to be doing some detailed engraving. And then if you're going to be cutting into thicker material or if you want to go quicker when you cut, then swap back over to the 40 watt. All right, now that we've seen the difference in those settings, I want to show you the camera and how it can help us to position things and hopefully have the system engrave exactly where we want. So I've got a piece of wood here. I've got the same one we were just using before. We'll engrave on the back of this card. And then something small, I've got this tiny little dog tag and it will be good to see if I'm able to use the camera to place all of these and then engrave on them uh, just as we would want it to be. So let's go ahead and set these items real quick. All right, let's place this block up here in this corner. Let's put uh, this square over here. I've got that tiny dog tag, which let's see if it'll stay. Yeah, I think it will. Put that right there. And then lastly, let's go this way on the little metal business card. Let's head over to the computer and see if we can't figure out how to engrave on all of these with absolute coordinates. Here in Lightburn, I want to press the Update Overlay button, and that's going to give us the location of those items that we just put in here, as you can see. Now, I want to go back and get that same image as before, this little cute cat here. Bring that in. And let's go ahead and shrink this back down and place it on these to be engraved. So let's go right here for this one. Let's go over here on this one. And I'm going to shrink this one down so hopefully it fits in there really good. And then let's go one more time over here on this little one. Shrink it down even more and place it about right here. All right, looking pretty good. Now I wanna try something real quick. I'm gonna move the business card so that it's not straight across. All right, let me update the overlay. All right, you can see how the business card is off to the side. Let's take this and try to line it up so that it matches right here. All right, there we go. So it's just got a, a bit of a uh, rotation to it. Well, I think I'm liking that. And of course you can use the image to uh, move these around however you need to to make sure they're lined up properly. So, all right, let's go ahead and move into the cuts here. We've got my images. Let's go ahead and set that power to 50 and a speed of 150. Now, because these are all different thicknesses, I'm gonna work on this one up here first. And so I'm gonna close this. I've got the module set to 22 watts. I'm going to press the home button right over here. Bring the laser back to home. So far, so good. It has sent the image up to the proper place. Let's see how well it does. Nice, our cute cat is looking good over here. Now, before I move anything else, I do want to go over here and get the laser refocused. So I'm just gonna use this focus right here for everything else, and that should be sufficient. So without moving any of my materials. I'm gonna get this right here. Okay, now I can hold this again, and hopefully everything else will be good to go from this point. Oh, <laughs> actually, I gotta remove this, because it is gonna be too tall. Let's see what our results are here using the camera to get the placement instead of having to manually place. So first of all, the cute cat seems to have turned out very nice. Of course, they're all cute cat here. 
That one also seems to have done well. And then lastly, we got this one right here, which uh, does really well. Okay, so as you can see, it is very handy to have that camera so you can place items in your bed and not have to worry about aligning the laser manually. You can just set it there with the image and engrave on top of it. Now that we've seen how the Creality Falcon 2 Pro is able to have the laser module swap between 22 watt and 40 watt, we've also seen how the camera is able to trace the bed and you're able to place items there and engrave without having to position the laser head, which is very handy. Let's go ahead and do a quick comparison between the Creality Falcon 2 Pro and the Jinmitsu L8. So this over here is the Jinmitsu L8. And it is a nice laser. The laser head is a 20 watt. And so that is uh, comparable to the 22 watt we were using over here on the Creality. Now there's a few differences. This comes with a honeycomb bed, as you can see down here, versus over here, there are the metal slats. Now one nice thing about the Creality is that it has a crumb tray. And so if I can just pull under here and it's easy enough to reach in and pull out the waste bits that I have. So I can take that and just toss it in the trash can. Now the Jinmitsu does not have that. As you can see over here, what you would have to do is um, find a way to pick up the honeycomb bed and pull out the pieces. Now the honeycomb bed does have smaller holes and so you often have less bits that fall through, but it still happens. Now, a few things that I like on the Creality that are not available in the Jinmitsu is the cable management here. So you can see these come off of the side over here. That's convenient. These are on the side over here. That's also convenient. And the air exhaust is over on the side as well. If you move over to the Jinmitsu L8, all of the cables are here in the front. I have bumped this before and it has killed a job because that is just loose enough and it's quite annoying when that happens. I've also noticed that if you have a small table to put your lasers on, the exhaust being in the back is inconvenient. You have to have the whole laser just barely on the table up here. So uh, also can be a bit of a hassle um, with that. Now, as far as the functionality goes, the laser seems to have been uh, performing well. I have noticed that the cables can um, connect with the uh, fan in the back. I've removed the fan now, but you can see how it smushes against there. Um, so that is kind of a concern as well, as far as design goes. If you move over here to the Creality, there is no way those uh, air exist tubes or power cables are gonna be hitting that fan over there. Um, so keep that in mind as well as you're looking at these two lasers side by side. Now some other features, there are keys on both machines and e-stops as well. This machine though has the option that you can move the laser head or you can also press the home button here. So that is very handy to have if you want to get the laser module out of the way or reset to home. You can also go over here and find that it has the air assist knob on the side. You can turn on your fan right here and then the light is over here on this side. Whereas if you move over to the L8, it does have the e-stop button, which is nice. The air assist is here on the front and you do have a replay button which uh, is also available on the Creality. However, you don't have the go to home or the move options on the front of the L8. So keep that in mind as well. If you're working in a room where you don't need the light, you can turn that off here on the Creality. If you're with the L8, if the machine is on, it's going to turn the light on. So let's see here if we get that to show. Oh, I've got the e-stop on, sorry. There we go. So the light in here is gonna be on and the fan on the laser module is running. So if you close that, the lights are just gonna always be on if the laser is on. 
When it comes to focusing, the Creality has two thumb screws, which you have to loosen both of those, and then you have to have the guide in order to lift this up to the proper height. If you move over here to the L8, it does have a focusing knob that will help you without having to keep any other uh, focusing guides. So you can just turn that to whatever height you need, and it has a single threaded uh, thumb screw right there to make your adjustments. Sticking with the cute cat theme, I've got a piece of wood again that I'm going to engrave that same cat using the Creality and then next to the L8, and we will do a comparison between the two machines. All right, I'm going to place this wood in some random location, and we will once again use the camera to find where we want to engrave that. I'm gonna press home and get the laser back to where it needs to be. It should be focused from our previous test. Get that light back on, close this up. Okay, there's our results for the Creality Falcon 2. Let's move over to the L8. Let's run the same piece of material here. Twice already I've bumped the USB cable and it has uh, disconnected from the computer. So that is certainly one thing that is nice about the Falcon 2 is that it doesn't have that issue. All right, there's the focus on that. Now let me see if I can use the camera on this one real quick. No, the camera does not seem to be working on the L8. So what I'm gonna do is manually locate this, get the air assist on. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's see what we got here. I'll bring you in closer to this so you can see the difference. Here we have the Falcon 2 Pro 22 watt and the Jinmitsu L8 20 watt. As you can see, the Jinmitsu is a little darker, which may have been due to a focusing issue. And the top one, I believe, does have a little bit more detail to it. However, they are pretty close. If you were to look over here and see the 40 watt versus the 20 watt, you could see that one is certainly a lot deeper. And uh, I think the detail is greater on this lower one, which was actually the 20 watt. I've had the Creality Falcon 2 Pro 40 watt for about a month now, and I've put maybe 20 to 30 pieces of material through it, and so far it has worked out quite well. There are plenty of features that I really enjoy about this. The camera is clear and easy to use. Of course, that's after you've set it up in Lightburn, which takes about 5 or 10 minutes. As far as the Jinmitsu L8 versus the Creality uh, comparison here, there are lots of things that I do like about the L8. However, the placement of the cables and cords and the exhaust make that machine difficult to use versus this one, the Creality, has the placement of those things in a much better spot. All in all, the Creality Falcon 2 Pro is a great machine and I am really enjoying the new feature of being able to go from uh, 40 watt to 22 watt in just a push of a button. If you want to check out the Creality Falcon 2 Pro, I will have links to this in the description down below. I'm Seth with Landa House, and I will see you in the next video.